this video I'm going to be discussing the Power Windows module on the driver's door in the Hummer H2. The circuit refers to this as the driver's door module, which is a complete microprocessor control system in its own right. It's not just a simple switch as a lot of people may think. This is what your driver's door module looks like. There are several, several revisions of this module, but the two main choices are between those with Hummers, which I think are pre-2005, which don't have the Power Windows global up-down buttons, and those afterwards which do. Now I've got a feeling that a, a door module from a later version will fit in an earlier one, but not the other way around because you lose the Power Windows functions. Specifically, we're going to look at issues with the driver's door actuator not working and what the reasons for this could possibly be. When you remove the back cover, you're left with the control module and the, and the actual button pad PCB inside. So we're not really interested in that. We're just going to concentrate on the main logic. First of all, we'll take a look at the wiring diagram. Now, this is the area we're looking at. And as you can see, it says driver's door module, DDM. And if we zoom in a bit on there, you can see we've got door lock actuator lock control, which is connected to C2 pin 21 and C2 connect to pin 20. So we've got door lock actuator lock control, door lock actuator unlock control, which is literally two wires connecting it to the door lock actuator mechanism itself. We've got between pin 21 and pin 3 on the mechanism. I think it's a gray wire. And then 20 to pin 2. And I think TN is TAN. I think, I'm not sure. We're not 100% on that one. So there's not an awful lot that can go wrong with the wiring to this. If your driver's door module is working, functioning, then you must have 12 volts on there, and presumably a good 12 volts if, if the windows go up and everything else, just what it's supposed to do. So it's unlikely to be a loss of power going to your DDM. So let's take a look at the actual PCB that's in there. When you remove the PCB, this is what you're faced with. This is connect to C2, and the top row goes from pin one on the right-hand side, to pin 13 and then on the next row down it goes pin 14 to pin 26 and we're interested in pins 20 and 21 which it goes to this chip here which is the door lock actuator chip if you like from here we go 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 so it's 20 and 21 those two pins go to this chip let's go a little bit further looking at the actual pcb diagram you can see there's connector C2, and there's a door lock actuator unlock, a door actuator lock, which is pin 20 and 21, as we previously mentioned. They go directly to this chip, which is an Infineon BTS 7740G. And you can see that these outputs are coming together to provide the door actuator lock drive, which I said goes to pin 21. This bunch of outputs go to pin 21, and this bunch of outputs, the unlock goes to pin 20. There are five signals going into that chip. Status lock L1, lock H2, lock L2, lock H2. Okay, and those connect to the microprocessor. And we've got lock L1, lock H1, lock L2, lock H2, and status, which is here. So they're all on that chip there. If you look at the PCB, then you can see the tracking for this chip connects direct. The pins are directly together and then directly to these two pins here, right? So if we just highlight that one there, you can see there's a bunch of tracks that go to that pin and a bunch of tracks that go to the other pin. The signals, we've got lock L1, which is pin two, which is that pin. If we zoom back, you can see that that winds its way around to the microprocessor, that pin there. Those tracks may not be exactly 100% as I've got them sketched out on here. This is my interpretation based on what I, you know, it's, it's going to be fairly close to the original. So we've got uh, pin two, pin seven, you see that winds its way around. It could be going top side, bottom side, underneath the microprocessor. It's going to be very inaccessible. Pin nine goes to there. Pin 13 is that one, it winds its way around to there. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this so you can see where they go on the microprocessor. And then we've got pin eight, which is status, which goes that way around and goes to pin one on the microprocessor. What could be wrong uh, and how can we fix it? Well, there could be two problems here. Either there's something wrong with the controls going to the to the chip itself or the device itself is faulty. 
So that's more than likely what it could be. I mean, it could be that the microprocess is faulty, but in my experience, that tends to be quite rare. But you could be unlucky, it could be that. As I mentioned, there are two main possibilities I feel. One of them is this device is defective, or you've got some contamination on the board, which is very common. Water gets into the Power Windows module, or condensation, or whatever, depends on where you live, and the board gets corroded, right? Take a look at the board, check to see if there is any signs of corrosion on there. If everything looks good and nice and clean, then I would opt for replacing this chip. Now, on the subject of corrosion, as I've mentioned, I, I have had problems uh, before, and as you can see, when you remove the chip, you've got these really bad areas of corrosion. The lighting on that particular view is not good. You can see with the chip removed, you've got these salts and, and contaminants connecting the tracks together, shorting them out, which affects the signals. It is possible to take the chip off and put it back on. This is a surface mount device, but it's a very skillful process and not for the faint hearted. I mean, it's, it, it requires a hot air gun and lots of patience and care. And it's a very skilled job. If you just happen to know someone who's into surface mount electronics, they may do that job for you. But you could try washing the board with isopropyl alcohol. If you do, do think it's, it's contaminated, just get a, a short brush, get some IPA, isopropyl alcohol, and just pour it on and just work it around the pins and just see if you've got any tracks corroded or missing. I have had some where the tracks have been broken and I've managed to repair the tracks. But if that's not the case and your PCB looks like this one, nice and clean, then I, I would think about working on this device. Now, to change that chip, the way that I would do it for those not skilled in surface mount would be to get some fine side cutters and then work my way around the chip, snipping each pin carefully, one at a time, going all the way around, being careful not to put too much pressure on the pin and the tracks below, because when you cut, you force the, the pin away from the chip. And if you're not careful, if, if you haven't got sharp side cutters, you'll push that away and you could actually lift the pad, which would be a disaster. So carefully snip those pins along there, top and bottom, remove the body of the old chip, then using a soldering iron, not too hot, to go around and just lift the pins off gently with a pair of tweezers or long fine nose pliers and just take the pins off one by one. Use a magnifying glass to make sure that all of the pads are clean and not shorting in any way to the, to, to the neighboring pads. Remove those pins. Then put on your a replacement chip aligned as it's shown there so you can read it. If you can read the writing and this, this marker is this, this side, then you've got it the right way around. And then just gently solder all of the pins back on. If you're half handy with a soldering iron, you can do that. Or like I say, if you know someone who's, who's an enthusiast, they may be able to do it for you. As I mentioned, the chip itself is a BTS7740G. Now you can get these on eBay. And they are freely available. Yes, they may come from China. Probably cost you less than $10 or $5 or something like that. And for my money, it's worth the chance swapping it out because I think these driver's door modules are around about $100 or something like that, plus the shipping, wherever it is. So that's the, the circuit involved. It's that chip, that connector, and the lines go to this microprocessor. Check for contamination. Clean it off if you can. If your microprocessor looks as if it's contaminated, then that could be the end of the story for you. It's quite possible. But there's not an awful lot to it, and that's a quick run down of the electronics involved in the uh, driver's door, a door lock actuator control. Mm -hmm.